Good morning, I'm Pastor Norman, and welcome to Happy the Grace United Methodist Church, where we learn and grow as followers of Jesus Christ to serve others and transform lives here, across the street, and around the world. In keeping with medical guidance, we are not using our buildings, and until further notice, the buildings are closed, but we are live streaming worship, and we are glad that you are joining us from around the neighborhood and across the state and across the nation, and indeed around the world. Last Sunday, we had some friends from Australia join us, so you are all welcome. Our Reopening Well Task Force has begun planning our way forward, and there is information in the announcements I e emailed out Friday and yesterday about uh, some, some aspects of how we'll reopen. We have a lot more to uh, work on to be prepared, and we will we'll be very cautious about that as we value human life and health. It will be some time before we can reopen our buildings, but we will keep you informed, and in any event, we are going to continue live streaming worship and we're offering adult Sunday school and Sunday school for our senior highs and young, and young adult class through Zoom. And I know that our other Sunday school teachers are reaching out to their classes in age appropriate ways. Today we celebrate Ascension Sunday as we remember the return of the risen Christ to God the Father. We also celebrate today Memorial Sunday as we remember those who have died in our nation's wars. And usually Memorial Day and Happy New Grace is very well celebrated. So I understand that tomorrow uh, will be a, another experience of loss because of the pandemic. We want to celebrate our graduates and we're aware that many graduations have been canceled or postponed or modified a great deal. Today would have been the baccalaureate for Happy New Grace High School. And so please share with us about your graduates. We want to celebrate with our graduates their achievements and please share with us about their degrees, the schools from which they have graduated and, and any honors or awards they received, their future plans, those sorts of things, so that we can share those in our newsletter, in our bulletin, and later on in worship in June. Grace Place Food Ministry needs canned proteins and veggies. Please leave those things in the bin that's outside the church office. There's a blue bin, plastic bin, outside the church office. And I want to thank you for your generosity these past four weeks. It's been wonderful. A member of our community caring for her husband needs Lysol spray or other antimicrobial spray and uh, can't afford it but cannot find any. If you can find some of that and get some and leave it in that same blue bin uh, for her, she'd be glad to reimburse you. Just attach, uh, just tape to your whatever you get, uh, receipt in your name, and she'll be glad to reimburse you for that. I'm soliciting dad jokes that I can share in worship on Father's Day, so please email or mail me some dad jokes. Thank you for your continued generosity and faithfulness in supporting Christ's ministry, for helping each other, and for staying safe. As we turn now to our call to testify, as we begin worship, I've been asking you to share with me ways in which you've seen God at work in the world, and also ways in which you feel you've carried the Christ of light out into the world. And so I have some examples of that to share today. Uh, one person says, when my mother was dying, I prayed that she would be comfortable and in peace. She was given a morphine drip while my sister and I and our children stood around her bed. That is an answer to prayer. She died seven years ago, just before her 88th birthday, on May the 22nd would have been her birthday. As I reflected on her birth and death, I was reminded and so very thankful for what Jesus' life, death, and resurrection mean for us all. That we have someone in heaven who knows and understands our pain and what it's like to say goodbye, and at the same time gives us hope of a joy to which we can look forward. And my mother's first great-grandchild was born within 24 hours of her burial after a long and complicated pregnancy, a divine intervention. I have a note here I want to share. Dear friend at Happy New Grace United Methodist Church, thank you for your generous donation of diapers. The need has been so great, but no request has gone unmet thanks to donors like you. You have helped our ministry to grow stronger than ever during this unprecedented time. So again, thank you and God bless from Sheila at Alpha's Glory Pregnancy Resource Center. 
So a way in which you all share God's light in the world. This past week also, you sent 185 protein items and 97 other items to Grace Place to help feed the hungry. Thank you for shining Christ's light in the world. As a sign of the reconciliation that Jesus Christ has worked between us and God, and our desire to be at peace with each other, we pass God's peace. May the peace of the Lord be with us all. Our opening hymn, The Battle Hymn of the Republic, was written by Julia Ward Howe after she had visited a Union Army camp and heard the men singing this tune. It was a camp meeting tune. This hymn became controversial as we were producing our current hymn book. Some wanted it removed from the hymnal. They thought it was too warlike. At least one person wanted it removed because they said it was hypocritical for us to sing it because at the time, apartheid still existed in South Africa and we were not willing to die in order to free people there. So there was a lot of controversy, but a letter writing campaign resulted in the inclusion of the Battle Hymn of the Republic in our current hymnal. It's an interesting hymn because what it really celebrates is Christ's triumph over evil, Christ's ultimate triumph over evil in human life. So as Chris plays for us the tune, hear now the lyrics to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I've seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of folk before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make us holy, let us die to make folk free. Our God is marching on. He is coming like the glory of the morning on the wave. He is wisdom to the mighty. He is honor to the brave. So the world shall be his footstool and the soul of wrong his slave. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. God of glory, because sometimes we just don't get it, or maybe we just aren't paying attention. If our bulb is burned out, change it. If the dimmer is on low, turn it up high. Do what you must to help us understand, because everything is different now. Christ died, but you raised him to new life. Now he's in charge of everything, including us. And the power you used for this miracle, you place in the hands of those who believe to rescue us from death, to let Christ rule our hearts, and to free others from sin. This really does change everything. Our hope is restored. Our inheritance is secured. Bring up the lights, Lord. Bring up the lights so we can serve you. As we get ready to go to God in prayer, in order to protect privacy and yet maintain our interconnectedness as people of faith, we only will be sharing first names as we name our joys and concerns. But if you recognize who some of these folk are, I invite you to reach out to them with a card or a call or just pray for them. Please pray for the family and friends of Wesley who once attended here and who died May the 16th after battling cancer 
cancer for at least a year. His life and resurrection were celebrated in this space this past Wednesday with his two daughters, Laura and Jennifer. I bid your prayers for those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. For all who are battling COVID-19 even now, including Julian, the 15-year-old grandnephew of John and Carolyn. Julian is better, but he is still experiencing breathing issues. And he's been told that it'll be two or three months before he's fully well. And Bert, the 103-year-old mother-in-law of Debbie, who is also battling COVID-19. I bid your prayers for 59 residents at a rehab facility in Bel Air with COVID-19, where 20 have already died. I bid your prayers for Mickey, the husband of our sister June. Mickey is in the hospital dealing with several medical issues, including, including a breathing issue. He is, praise God, slowly improving. I bid your prayers for our sister Nikki, recovering from double knee replacement surgery this past Tuesday, a surgery that was delayed because of the pandemic. And I bid your prayers for her husband, Tom, who is her primary caregiver. I bid your prayers for our sister Patty, who is dealing with difficult medical issues and anxiety that go with them, which prevents sleep. I bid your prayers for Ralph, the father of our sister Julie and grandfather of our sister Salona. He is battling cancer in Tennessee. I bid your prayers for Laura, a friend of our sister Susie. Laura is recovering from surgery for cancer that she had this past Friday. Praise the Lord for this surgery because it was finally allowed after a delay due to COVID-19. I bid your prayers for Adam, the son of Leslie and Dan. Uh, the wife of one of Adam's co-workers tested positive for COVID-19 this past week and so he was sent home from work. I bid your prayers for Dave, one of our brothers in the congregation, Dave, is recovering from a very serious case of pneumonia, and it'll take some time for him to be fully recovered, and I bid your prayers for his wife, Debbie, as well, as his primary caregiver. I bid your prayers for Michael, the 22-year-old son of Linda. Linda's a friend of our sister Bronwyn. He is in rehab, but not progressing well, so please pray for Michael. I bid your prayers for J.R., Helen's son, who is dealing with complications of Crohn's disease, but praise God, he is finally able to afford the Humira he needs to treat his Crohn's. I bid your prayers for Mary, whose pain is very great, and she cannot get care because her doctor's office is closed because of the pandemic. I bid your prayers for all who battle addiction and find it hard in this difficult time. I bid your prayers for public health and medical workers, caregivers, and researchers, for those quarantined at home, and for our four confirmands. I bid your prayers as May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and many are isolated and anxious and vulnerable. I bid your prayers for mental well-being. I bid your prayers this Memorial Day for our veterans, especially those unable to get medical care because of the pandemic. And I bid your prayers for all those who are serving our nation. I bid your prayers for those Gold Star families who grieve the loss of loved ones. Let us thank God this week that our sister Barbara has recovered well from joint surgery and pneumonia. That our young brother Canaan dealing with illness is much better. We praise God for that. Let us praise God that Susan, Debbie's mother, celebrated her 97th birthday yesterday. That our brother Bob is home from the hospital and continuing rehab from a stroke, and that he and Georgia are very happy that he is home. We praise God today that Bud, Annabelle's brother, is out of rehab and settled in a new living situation with his daughter, to the joy of all of his family. And we praise God today for medical first responders, makers of medical equipment, the blessings of relationships, and those technologies that keep us connected. We praise God that our brother Ian, who experienced a drive-by party this past week in celebration of his graduation from Harford Community College, was able to do that. And we praise God that our young sister Salona, the daughter of Julie and Patrick, has been inducted into the Tri-M Music Honor Society at the John Carroll School. We praise God today for those willing to serve our nation and who have sacrificed their lives for our defense. And now, as we spend some time in silence. Let us share with God privately those things I've not named aloud. O 
O God of eternity and God of our days here and now, visit with your loving presence all who mourn, especially when they could not be with their loved one while they were ill. Visit with your healing presence those who are ill, especially where fear or anxiety complicate their illness. Visit with your strengthening presence those who battle addiction day by day and hour by hour, that they may stand strong in their resolve. Visit, Lord, the lonely and all who miss their family, friends, or neighbors, that they may not be alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing, for new and better living arrangements, for achievements of scholarship and practice, gifts and study. Thank you, Lord, for those who selflessly serve nation and fellow humanity, especially in the front lines of public health and medical care. Guide and guard them and give them insight, wisdom, patience, and stamina for their work. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of prayer and community and for your overarching grace and power in Christ, our Ascendant Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in the service, in the worship service, when I get to talk with the children. So I want to say hello today to Max and Maddie and, and to Ian and Bodie and Jesse and Isabella and Emmy and Ellie and Taylor and Andrew and Kate. Evelyn and Camille and Sarah and Adeline and Lorelai and Ileana and Reezy and Scout and Wyatt and Will and Amelia and Hazel and Iris and Nolan and Eli. And if I haven't named your child, please email me, let me know, or call the church office and I'll name them next Sunday. This is a time when we're missing people. We may be missing our friends. Or maybe our grandparents are not able to visit with us, and we can't visit them. But this won't last forever. Sometimes someone needs to go away for a while, and we know they'll be coming back. And so we don't miss them quite as much when we know they'll be back soon. Today we're going to hear a Bible story about Jesus' friends and how they missed Jesus that Jesus had to go away, but he's not really gone. That's the wonderful thing about Jesus. Even though he needed to go away, he's not really gone because he is always with us. And we call that presence the Holy Spirit. So I invite you this week to ask a grown-up to help you find a picture of someone you know who does not live with you. So find a picture in your home of someone you know that does not live with you. And when you see that picture, say, thank you, God, that Jesus is always with us. Thank you, God, that Jesus is always with us, even though we can't see him. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he is always with us. Thank you for giving us Jesus as a special friend who never leaves us alone, who never, who never ignores us or deserts us, but who's always with us. Thank you for the gift of Jesus to show us your love. Amen. So this week, when you see the picture of someone you know who does not live with you, remember to say, thank you, God, for Jesus, who is always with us. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Acts of the Apostles. It's, it's the opening verses of that book, where the author whom we often style to be Luke, the author says, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. 
After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas, son of James. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are in a period of time right now where we are wondering what the future will be, what the future will look like what the future will hold for us. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought us into a new era. What that future will be remains somewhat uncertain. And so we are feeling our way along, we're feeling our way forward into that new future, slowly, tentatively, into that future. In the same way, the, resur the resurrection of Jesus Christ upends all the expectations, good or ill, of the disciples. It's wonderful, and it's a little scary. Everything is new, nothing will ever be the same for them, and they have a lot to learn because there is much that is unknown. And so they too are feeling their way, feeling their way forward into the future. And so we're engaged in an Easter sermon series about feeling our way forward into the future. Our scripture lesson today from the Acts of the Apostles speaks to us of loss and of mission and of presence. Of loss, mission, and presence. There's an arc to the opening of Acts that is very real to our human experience. Jesus' followers experience a horrific loss when he is crucified. But three days later, they experience the wonderful but shocking res resurrection. Acts says they then bask in his presence and his teaching for 40 days. How wonderful that time must have been and what wonderful conversations they must have had with Jesus. And I, I've often imagined what questions they might have asked. You know, Jesus, when you said this, did you mean this? What did you mean by that? And why did you do that? What an opportunity that was for them. While he's with them, he gives them a great mission, an immense task, a wonderful purpose. They're to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, to the entire known world. And then, then Jesus ascends into heaven and disappears in a cloud. And they stand there gawking up into the sky, which is perfectly normal. We would do the same thing. Jesus is gone, you see. Gone. Gone again. The two men in white verify that. And his followers are left behind. Left to wait. 
left to wait because that is what Jesus tells them to do, to wait. And he doesn't say for how long. He says it's a matter of days, but that's all. He says, just wait. And I imagine that the grief of Good Friday, the feelings of loss over the absence of Jesus come flooding back to fill their hearts. It's a grief of renewed loss brought on by the absence of Jesus. They are left there in their sadness with the immense responsibility of representing Jesus to the world. Of representing Jesus to the world. I have often wondered, why did Jesus make them wait? Why does Jesus make them wait 10 days? We don't know. Eventually, they'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, but in the meantime, they seem to be left alone, leaderless, bereft of Jesus, staring into a void, an abyss of uncertainty. Two things help them in this situation. One is, one is that when they ask Jesus for a timeline just before he ascends, he reminds them the timeline is God's responsibility. God is in charge of that. They don't have to worry about it. And the other thing that helps them is the gift of presence. The gift of presence. Not, not the presence of Jesus through the Holy Spirit, although that will come. After all, Jesus has not really left them because God is still present. But that's not the presence I'm talking about. Rather, I'm talking about the presence of each other. For Acts shows the followers of Jesus huddled together in an upper room, maybe the upper room where they shared the Last Supper, probably the upper room where they sheltered after the crucifixion. And if they seem a little disoriented, that's normal. Resurrection and ascension are both disorienting events. Acts shows us, gathered together, the 11 remaining apostles, Mary the mother of Jesus, Jesus' brothers, and it says certain women. We can only speculate who they were, but probably Mary Magdalene, maybe Mary and Martha from Bethany, and other women who were at the crucifixion and who went to the empty tomb. You see, this is the crowd that won't go home. This is the faithful remnant waiting for a future they cannot imagine and do not understand and stunned by all they have experienced from death to resurrection to ascension. But they are together. They are together gathering strength from staying connected and being in prayer. Friends, that is exactly where we are today. That is where our society is. We are dealing with loss and mission and presence. We are, first of all, dealing with loss and grief, a lot of grief. So many activities we anticipated have been canceled or postponed or highly modified. Our summer mission trip, vacation Bible school, Bible studies, cantatas, the Independence Day parade, proms and graduations, weddings and parties, sports events and tournaments, whole seasons lost or shelved. And then there's the loss of jobs, of work, of customers, of income, and the grief of struggling to survive in the face of poverty and want. And then there's the loss of health and the grief of so much suffering and so many deaths. Almost 100,000 so far in the United States alone. Just this past week, it was reported in the news how many deaths have occurred in just two rehab and nursing centers in Bel Air and Forest Hill here in Harford County. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain that goes on and on. Empty chairs and empty tables. Now my friends are dead and gone. Phantom faces at the window, phantom shadows on the floor, empty chairs at empty tables, 
where my friends will meet no more. We are in grief. We are in grief from loss. And there's plenty of waiting, too. Waiting. Waiting in quarantine or isolation. Waiting for healing to happen, for things to reopen, for schedules to resume, for decisions to be made, for items ordered or backordered to arrive, for equipment to be built, for PPE to be manufactured, waiting for information or for treatments and vaccines to be developed. And we, people of faith, we, church, have a wonderful, frightening mission before us. For we are still called to represent Jesus to the world, but now we're asked to do that in what is being called a new normal, a new normal that feels, frankly, just weird. It is exciting, but a little daunting. The future is not clear. It's cloudy, like the cloud that obscured Jesus from view in the ascension. Part of our new normal seems to be learning to live with uncertainty. And if we feel a little disoriented, that is perfectly normal. A global pandemic like this one is completely unprecedented. One preacher, one preacher writing long before the COVID pandemic says this, when we experience a major transition in our lives or in the life of the church, we find ourselves similarly situated. Change can be exciting or unsettling, welcome or resisted, joyous or anxiety-provoking. In 2006, a NASA spacecraft called New Horizons lifted off. A year later, it swung past Jupiter, and nine years after that, after passing Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, it sent back spectacular pictures of Pluto. It continues into space to explore the outskirts of our solar system. In Jesus' ascension, he lifts off and disappears, but he points us to new horizons. New horizons. He points us to the poor, rejected, lonely, starving, or beaten, and calls us to see him in them. Forty days, it says, his followers spent with him. Forty days in Jewish understanding was the amount of time it took a student to learn their rabbi's teaching well enough to repeat it. Jesus had been with his followers long enough for them to get a new understanding of him and his resurrection and of themselves, and now they are ready to try to see the world as God sees the world. Here in our human struggles, our very human struggles of marriage and unemployment, dissension and jealousy, rejection and broken trust, Jesus shows the way beyond the crucifixion to the ascension, beyond suffering to wholeness. And we are called to point others to that way. And finally, just like his first followers, we're given two gifts. The first, is that God is in charge. Yes, we have a responsibility to reflect God's love in the world, but the timeline of God's plan is not ours to manage. Even though we cannot know the future and therefore cannot control it, because of the ascension of Christ, we know the future is in God's hands. And so we are called not to success, but to faithfulness. And the second gift we are given for the present moment the second gift we're given is that of presence and prayer. Jesus is gone and yet not gone. The Holy Spirit has come. That's next week's message. The Holy Spirit has come and God is with us, and we live in the presence of each other like the first disciples. We are gathered together in worship and in faith and in caring and in connection, even though we're physically separated by distance and disease. And we can always be united in the power of prayer. Thanks be to God. So today, as on the day Jesus ascended, we are experiencing loss and grief. We have a mission and a purpose in challenging times, and we are given the gifts of prayer and presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our second hymn today, 
It was written by Charles Wesley, and it uses the image of the morning, of daybreak, as a metaphor for the beginning, for the beginning of the new day of faith, when we begin or renew our discipleship. So here now the lyrics as Chris plays for us the tune. Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light, Son of righteousness, arise and triumph over the shades of night. Day spring from on high, be near, day star in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return till thy mercy's beams I see. Till thy inward light impart, cheer my eyes and warm my heart. Visit then this soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me, radiancy divine, scatter all my unbelief. More and more thyself display, shining to the perfect day. And now as we respond to God's good news by offering ourselves, our lives to Jesus Christ, thank you once again for your faithful and generous support of Christ's ministry here through Havity Grace United Methodist Church. And now let us pray in silence as we ponder with gratitude who it is that has helped us through this pandemic so far. hear the lyrics to the doxology, one of the most popular songs in United Methodism around the globe. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, celebrate the gift of Jesus resurrection we renew our commitment to our faith and as a sign of our gratitude we offer ourselves in your service use us to spread hope and the promise of Easter renewal in the name of the risen one amen and now friends from where we are to where you need us Jesus now lean on from the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lean on. To refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on. Because good things have been prepared for those who love God, Jesus, now lead on. <laughs> 